If you're interested in purchasing an automotive lift from us at RedlineStands.com, there's a few things that I want you to know about the concrete requirements and how they relate to automotive lifts. Since two post lifts are the most common lift out there that we sell to customers, we're going to talk about this from the stance of a two post lift. So if we have a look at all the two post lifts we sell, let's pick a couple of good sellers. We'll pick the Kernel 9K, we'll scroll on down a little further here and pick the Kernel 12K. One of the things I want you to notice and understand, notice how the base plates on this 12K are massive. Great big base plates that span the load out over a nice large area. That's very important in making sure that the concrete does not bust when it's under a load. That's necessary in the case of a great big lift like a 12K. If we come over here and we have a look at this 9K, it's a smaller base plate. That kind of tells us that the concrete requirements for that lift are very important. If we scroll on down here, we have tabs on all of these lifts where you can click on downloads and you can click here on the manual to open the manual. When we open the PDF manual, it's pretty easy. You type control F, type in a word like concrete or cement type in concrete and it brings up everywhere where concrete were to appear inside this manual. You'll notice right here it says cement should be minimum of four inches thick and 3,000 psi tensile strength with steel or fiber mesh reinforcement. For the record I like to see customers use both fiber mesh and steel. It's both very inexpensive materials to put underneath your lift and it's just extra assurance that the concrete slab is going to be uh, you know extra strong. Also, I recommend using tensile strength concrete that is higher than the minimum. This particular lift calls for 4 inch thick concrete and 3000 psi tensile strength. Some of the lifts out there call for 6 inch concrete, 5 inch concrete, so on. You know, you got to look at the manual to see. But anyways, this is important to note that this information is here. If we go ahead and click and we follow on down through, we find more intelligent information here about the concrete. One of the other things that I want to point out is if you notice here, it tells us that the concrete should have a 28 day cure time. Cure time. It is a good solid bet that you need to give your slab at least no less than one month to cure before you bolt a, any kind of an automotive lift, two post, single post, whatever it may be, to that slab. Let the lift, uh, excuse me, let the concrete cure. It's very common that if you'll scroll through the manual of a lift, you'll find a dimension here, a diagram that will show you the size of the base plates and the width that they are apart. If we were to take just this image right here and move it into its own image, what I like to tell customers to do is to dish out the area under their base plates where they're going to pour the concrete. And so what we're doing here is we're drawing a three foot radius, six foot diameter circle around each, each one of these columns where they're going to go. And then we're connecting it across the middle, almost making like an egg shape. Uh, so this is going to be six feet tall and an unknown width, depending on what lift you're putting up. Next, what I would like to see customers do is dish out the dirt where this is going to be poured so it's two inches thicker than the manual says is necessary. So if the manual calls for a four inch slab, we're going to dish out the area in gray to six inches thick. That's going to give us 50% more concrete that is actually recommended by the manual. It's not going to cost much money, but it's a lot of peace of mind. In these next few photos, you'll notice that as the contractors are doing the concrete prep work for my home shop, they've removed about an extra two inches of dirt where the lift is going to go, making the concrete extra thick in that location. In this photo, you can see that they've added wire mesh that goes right underneath the lift to help reinforce the concrete. Now, you can't see it, but they have added fiberglass to the concrete mix as well. And lastly, I just want to caution you against adding rebar directly underneath your lift towers. If when you are drilling your anchors uh, you hit that rebar, it is going to ruin your bit, it is not going to continue drilling, and you're going to have to move your lift. So just be careful of that. We cannot control if concrete cracks, but we can control where concrete cracks. Notice in this video how I've scored lines into my concrete slab using a circular saw with a concrete cutting blade. What I've done is determined where the concrete will crack. If you look inside these scored lines, you'll notice that it has cracked on the scored lines and kept the crack away from the lift. If you intend to mount a two post lift to an existing slab, you're not going to be able to determine the concrete's tensile strength or type of reinforcement, but what you can do is check it for thickness. This is done with a hammer drill.
After consulting the manual to your lift to find out the minimum concrete thickness, place a mark on a masonry bit the appropriate number of inches from the end of the bit. From there, I like to wrap a piece of tape around the bit to signify the point that it must come flush with the surface of the concrete. From there, you bore a hole into your concrete. If the bit passes through the concrete slab and hits the dirt before the tape becomes flush with the surface of the concrete, then your concrete simply isn't thick enough to mount a lift and be safe for use. A lot of folks want to skip this step of taking a drill and checking the thickness of their slab. They think that you can take a shovel and just remove a little dirt out at the outside edge of the building and look at the thickness of the slab. That's not actually true because concrete slabs have what's called a footing. It's a band that goes around the outside edge of the concrete slab Well, you'll find that it's normally about an extra foot thick going around the outside edge. So as a result, the thickness of the concrete at the edge does not tell us anything about the thickness of the concrete in the middle. Well everybody, that's been some basic pointers of what I could share with you regarding the concrete, uh, all the requirements of it, what you need to know, the questions you need to ask in order to make sure that the lift that you're installing is going to be safe. Uh, obviously, with a 3500 quad cab four wheel drive up on my lift, uh, I trust my concrete. I do want to mention that before I lifted this truck, I knew this was the heaviest truck that I was going to lift in quite some time. I went ahead and retorqued my anchors, and frankly, I was surprised. They probably had 40 to 50 foot pounds of torque on them, despite the fact that I torqued them down to 100, 120 foot pounds probably 18 months ago. So there's another good pointer for you. Go ahead and make sure that all of your anchors are torqued down every year or two. Just check them to make sure that they're still tight. If you found this video helpful, uh, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. Hit the thumbs up and uh, check us out at redlinestens.com. Not only do we sell lifts, we're out to try and make sure that the people buying our lifts are obviously safe in doing so. We appreciate you taking the time to watch, and we got more videos coming y'all's way. Thanks for watching.